Oh, Karen. Uh, do you know Karen Burns? She was there too. Because I'm I on LinkedIn. We're connected, but I've never met her. Okay, because she was part of this family of Mike Beale. Uh, this is where I met her. Yeah. So. You must have been so tight with Mike Beale that. Uh, I... I'm so so sad that I never got to meet him or, or really. Yeah. No. So hey, I'm glad you're you're here. So yeah, they, I, I cannot imagine. I'm not a professional podcaster or what have you. So only two great gentlemen, uh, John and Ryan, were there, and I couldn't keep up with all of the messaging. And uh, and I when no, I didn't know where the chat was. To, to, the best seems like the YouTube is only followed. No, but the funny thing is when I'm using the streamer. On the streamer, you have everything, Instagram, uh, Twitter. So, uh, and of course, on Instagram, they just like a lot of people just say, I, 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 I. And so, so I was trying to see, like, so I have to, to filter to just LinkedIn because now I just learned today that finally, because LinkedIn live streaming is very experimental, it's beta mode. So they don't connect with the streamers. Okay. They want us mm. to be live from their tool at Microsoft, but it's not worth it. Because for me, I've got community, they don't go on LinkedIn. So they, they prefer to watch me on Twitter. So that's why when I say, oh, I'm 30 about the boats, of course, there's a, you see, if I'm just doing it on LinkedIn, I will have an average of five views a week. Doing it like across the board, I've got about 75 views a week. So it's kind of better. So that's the purpose. Yeah, again, I, I just didn't know, this is my first time joining you. I've seen your invites you know, every week. I've been hoping to join. I just haven't, I, I listened to the podcast, you know, a while back, definitely the one with Daniel. And again, I'm just so, so pleased to actually talk with you in real time. You sent me emails about you know, the Purple Squirrel Cafe and all this stuff. I was just, yeah. uh, I was like, I, I can't type fast enough to be able to share how much. Uh, and that's what I said. I've, I've, I've got this. I'm feeling. Yeah, and I got this idea. I said, like, uh, back in the day, you had radio show or talk radio show with uh, opening the phone right now, you know, at the end of the show. So I said, like, let's do this here. Why not? But instead of a call, you could like uh, some people say, oh, you should like put your WhatsApp numbers or Telegram and they call you there. But I said, well, well I mean, Zoom could be also. Anyways, it's an experimentation. And I think it's it's faster, especially with that 45 second delay. I mean, now we talk and uh, and it's better. So um, so what, what will be uh, according to uh, the uh, kind of conversation we try to have with John? I don't know if John is still there, if you want to join. But in the chat, John, you should see the, the link. If you want to join us for this conversation, because you have great comment, I didn't see everything, but what will be the the, the key thing that uh, the takeaway from this uh, kind of presentation of about the quality that declining about um, uh, safe is that will replace safe and those big organization and uh, yes, invitation based combination with agreement based. So tell me your general thought about it, like. For, Oh, uh, which which thought to start with? Um, <laughs> wherever you wherever you see it and you feel it. Well, I mean, it, to me, it, it again coming back, you know, seeing agile from the outside for a long time, or agile, whatever, whatever on earth that means. I, I personally feel that the word is meaningless anymore. It just it's and, and again, my my thinking is is going in different places, but I, I think. What turned the light on for me was invitation, right? And, and engagement, because the, the issue of employee engagement has been, I remember hearing about that back in, in 1999 and 98, and because I had a Gallup training mm -hmm. and uh, in the Gallup Strengths Finder and, and all of that stuff. And, and the Gallup survey, everybody in the world uses the Gallup survey to say that the workplace is disengaged. Right, people don't care, you know, whatever, and and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes, and that and that for some reason, engagement doesn't 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 rise. The engagement stats are as bad now as they were back in in the early two thousands, and why is that? And I, and I was wondering for myself, I was like, wow, engagement sounds yeah, that sounds great. What does it mean to be fully engaged? Yeah, and what does it and, mean? And, and, what, what does it mean? And, and it's, it's, it's word, the definition of words. I mean, that's all about agreement too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. well, you, you and I are having a conversation. Well, what does agile mean to you? And, and, and that's, and that's, and, and this is the whole, the cool thing about inviting leadership too in the book is that 
that you now Daniel put the, the, the ready for agile checklist. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But you know, so yesterday, they, yesterday I was amazed because we had like at my co-working space, once a month we gathered together all the uh, co-workers and and that co-working space there's a lot of people working in blockchain, AI, you know, these complex things and stuff and great mind and and I was surrendered I, all of a sudden they knew that I was a kind of an agile coach. So we have a solution architect, an enterprise architect, uh, two developers of uh, very kind of new open shift type of things and everything, mm -hmm. uh, and the banking and the decentralized finance. And now they were sharing their experience with especially Scrum, by the way, or even DevOps. And uh, they say like, uh, when we hear you and, and, and two of them, two developers told me that, oh, just this conversation with a glass of wine and beer, you make me rethink what I perceive of agile or even agility because the way we do it and I won't name the workplace they work for but they say like it's just a, again being in pose and push and uh, just do it this is the recipe and do your lasagne but we don't care about what you have to say and so that's why I put that list earlier in my show inspired by those gentlemen and ladies that I talked yesterday it was very meaningful because the that's always the thing. And, and sometimes, you know, one of my clients two weeks ago, uh, I've been asked by developers and designer uh, for a special session without their Scrum Master because they wanted to talk to me, the enterprise coach, about making something against the Scrum Master and the leadership of their company. So I said, like, hold on a second. Against the Scrum Master? In, in, yeah, because in... they were not pleased about the servant leader they have. They were not pleased about the way they, you know, and they say like uh, it's been it's been months. We told them that we don't want to work in iteration. We want to do DevOps because the way we produce the good, we don't have enough customer feedback. Anyways, and this sprint goal or product goal doesn't matter. Doesn't make sense to our context. So that they 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 ask me guidance about it. But I said like we should invite you, Scrum Master. You should actually. Take advantage of your retrospective to reopen it and make it happen. So that was my kind of my general advice in that meeting because I, as a consultant, I don't want to be used into a war and stuff. And I said like, let's 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 gather together and your next the retrospective. The wars guy doesn't want to be in a war. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I'm just making that up because someone insulted me on LinkedIn that I was the Alex Jones of, of this. So, I just, so if you don't want to collaborate, 2001 will commence again. So, you know, just like we make fun. Eh? We have to have fun, right? I'm doing it for free, just for fun. And, and I try to be meaningful at the time and, and try to propose value. Just not, just, I like to rent, but after my renting, here's what I think we should do together. What do you think, guys? So, so that's proposed value and interaction. So. So I'm like yeah, that. So, so you, you, you're telling me that the story that that team that, that or, uh, was, was this in the co-working space that the developers no 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 were that's uh, talking to you no about no because this is something else so no that, something that, else that that they that what, what was the team that invited you and excluded the scrum master this is and the product saying. owner and the whatever other stakeholders only the software guys the QA people and and some designers like, like the workers the, those who are at the core of what the product the exists. Team. The yeah. people for whom Agile was invented, right? The, yeah. The, the, the people doing the work so, were, were getting burned out back in 19, whatever, the 90s. And then the, the, the 17, you know, gurus of the mountain and, and went to Snowbird and said yeah. that we want to make the world, we want to make the world better for the people doing the work, right? The code and for the people who are receiving the code, right? Yeah. So connecting that. And then, 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 ah, the lights turned on. And then, then now, 20 years later, we're, we're back. And who is Agile for? Agile is for the coaches. Agile is for the scrum masters and product owners. And Agile is for the consulting firm. And that, that who is left behind? Who's not in that picture? Again, the developers. You talk about engagement. You talk about engagement. Whether they are consultant or employee, permanent employee, what I receive right now in the last five years, all the feedback, all the the uh, openness of those people in the one-on-one -on -one or small group conversation, it says like, everyone always apply it as, yeah, we could use the word one size fits all again, but it's like, and especially, you know, developers, I met a guy at three different clients. Could you imagine that? A very, very genius programmer who I met yeah, at one. Three different clients? Yeah, because these guys are jumpers. I call them jumpers. 
because they think that the the grass will be greener out, out there and the uh, the agile will be a better agile company so i even though with my talent agile not just for recruiter but also for for programmer i said ask those three questions or those questions i won't make it like maybe I'll, I'll make a show just on it but i mean ask those questions in your interview to see how much they are really agile and then you will be able to fit in it. So, so anyways, I kind of build trust. I'm not just a trusted advisor for executive. I'm, I think I'm a trusted advisor for for people to work. But but in the meantime, I, I, try, I try to, if they have impediment on cultural mindset and also process, that's, I mean, like they should solve it as an open conversation with with their people. So it's one thing to, to ask the coach about something, but what about uh, what you could do so so you know but yeah they are left behind and not just the developers i'm talking a lot about engineer but uh, there's also all of the other creative people uh, even like people uh, and um, and the business ownership uh, with sales and marketing that they were introduced more and more into this business agility but who knows really business agility um you know that, that's you another to, question thing. You have to define, you have to agree, agree on, on what it means. Right? Yeah, and I remember with Daniel Mizik and the group of Mike Beetle, it took us about uh, 18 months to agree on something, to add a definition that you could still appreciate. On. So, so, so let me add, and if, if you wouldn't mind uh, indulging me for a little bit of the history. I, and I have, a, I have a meeting at 1.30, so I, yeah, me too. I, would, I would very much you know, like to hang out for a while. I, I, you, you've convinced me to come back next week. Yes. Uh, next um, week, yeah, I don't know exactly what will be the show. So on Tuesday, you should know. But I don't know. But, so, yeah. <laughs> or maybe that could be you. That could be you and I having a conversation on a topic sure. that you'd like. Because the, the day real agile, it's an open mic as well. It's a conversation. It's not an interview. It's something that we could have, like, and uh, we'll be more than happy if you'd like to propose me something that you 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 want to dare talk about. You want to, because you care. We dare because we care. That's the tagline. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the caring, uh, care agile, dare agile, care agile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, exactly. I, I, I'm all about the words. But so you mentioned Daniel and Mike Beadle. And so there was some some circle, some gathering that you're all together talking about business agility. Yes. So uh, when was this, and, and can you just tell me like the, 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 the three minute arc of what that, what that was? But me, I met like, uh, because I used to hang out with uh, the Ken Schrauber gang in Boston. Uh, this is how I met uh, Mike Beadle. Um, so that is back in 2007, maybe something like this. And I love this guy mindset. I mean, like he, he, he was bold and everything. So, and then after, uh, he started talking to me about enterprise Scrum, and I love it because I've kind of read about it, like very far away, uh, because I always follow me. the first book on Scrum ever written behind me. Yeah. That's also the first book I read to help my team of engineer becoming uh, a scrum team. My first scrum team back in 1999 was highly inspired by Ken Schrauber. And so that, that the book back there, uh, I'm sorry, I, I asked you to tell me a story and then I interrupted you in the middle of it. Yeah. But, so that, okay, so, all right. So, so, the so but the, the thing is, when I read that book back in 1999, this is when I kind of learned about Ken Schrauber and Mike Beadle, and the manifesto was not there yet. Remember? So, so I kind of reached out and they, you remember there was a forum groups within our email that you could apply to a news group and to a MARC use stuff. Exactly, use Usenet. Yeah. So I was there with those guys. It was the Boston group something. And so, uh, and then we exchanged. So I knew Mike virtually since the early 2000. And, um, and because back then we didn't have Scrum Alliance, we didn't have Scrum Org, nothing, nothing was there. You have only some books and those news group and on their net and stuff like this to exchange with others, Scrum Master and other people. So that that's a, that's kind of how I met him virtually for years and years. And the first time I met him in person, it was in a, in a Boston conference in 2006. That was great. And then after we kind of keep in touch um, throughout uh, LinkedIn in 2010, and I start um, being interested in his classes that he was doing beyond Scrum Alliance. Uh, for this enterprise scrum and actually um and so i finally uh, met him again and that that circle of people i will say you know this 2016 kind of line when uh, dave thomas went out about agile is dead when martin forward called out the agile industrial complex when mike beetle also wrote this great paper that i did 
couple of weeks ago, I read it to you uh, on Medium, like uh, Agile is not really Agile anymore and why? And he explained it. So so there was like a kind of, and they see that counter revolution. So, so he, he tried to gather people around the real revolution for him was business agility. And actually, uh, Evan Lebrun from Business Agility Institute was a lot influenced by both Martin Fowler and Mike Beadle to kind of created it. So, and but and then of course uh, I won't name everyone there, but in the circle there were kind of it was very. But I liked it. It was more like an open space than a safe space. It was not safe to be around all of those guys because it was, <laughs> it was kind of knock it out. But but that's the story. So that's why I told you 18 months to came to a definition, a proposed definition of what is business agility, center of what Mike always foresee with others like me about customer engagement and employee engagement. And if you, I don't know how much you read about Enterprise Scrum, but every canvases, <laughs> we call it the, the folly of canvases, it's everything about experience. It's not just customer and employee experience. It's also stakeholder experience, shareholder experience. I uh, see it's experience. How do we experience our interaction together? And what's, it's, it's more than the what's in it for us. It's if I'd like to be engaged, how I build my team around those value over the value of the Agile Manifesto and of course the five Scrum value. So, so that's, Anyways, so that's uh, how I start uh, mingling with them. And this is where I met Suryu, uh, Michael Orman. I don't know if you know Michael Orman. Yvette, Yvette, who's Suryu? Suryu uh, from New York, uh, okay, uh, a great a great pupil of, of Mike. Uh, Michael Orman uh, from um, uh, really into the open space movement as well. Um, yeah. And um, and some others, uh, Simon Roberts and, and, and Scotland, uh, John McFadden that is uh, the head of the Agile Center with Karim Arbot. So we're a great, oh, and also all our friends in Mexico, because you remember, Mike was the Latino. So we have like uh, Ulysses Aguila. I didn't, even, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that until I watched your, uh, uh, watched the video with, with Mike and actually had some, some audio. Yeah, it, so. yeah. So, that, so that's the thing. So that's the story. And then, and, and, and I'm still in touch with his uh, widow, Barbara. Um, yeah. And, um, and uh, for me, Mike he was a friend too, and we have so much in common. I mean, uh, he was a PhD in physics. I'm a dropout of astrophysics. I said dropout because in astrophysics and cosmology, you have to do your PhD, in, uh, PhD sorry, and publicize something I didn't. I stopped at the master's. But I mean, like, we were both kind of uh, crazy people, one in like empirism. It's important to put science into agile coaching, into agile consulting, and sports too. Because, you know, it's the emulation of sport. Agility is not moving fast. It's moving intelligently with flexibility. So, and this is, and I, I like the sports, though. And, and I, I love maybe going through the metaphors thing. And then, and, and again, there's not, there's like two minutes before I figure out yeah. the, the sport metaphor comes. There are two um, sports coaches who really hit me as far as how they connect with agility. And one was John Wooden. Right. So mm -hmm. this is be be quick, don't hurry. And I, I think um, also, what's his name? Josh Curiosity uh, brought that be quick, don't hurry thing too. And then it's like it's that that line through. Now the yep. other one is Phil Jackson, kind of the Zen, the Zen approach. And this is this is the open space, the flow, and the, the letting the team build into something beautiful. You know, so the, those were the two sports coaches. Now, now is, is there a sporting coach that that you, that you, that who is your, who is your spiritual guide from a coaching perspective? I don't have, like, uh, I did uh, professional cycling and racing for years. So I will say Pierre Lemay, Pierre Lemay, my coach. I mean, like, uh, I don't know if you're watching it, but uh, he's uh, he's a great uh, Canadian cyclist. Actually, he did, uh, he did finish. Uh, so, so for me, like, and uh, you know, when, when those those people talk about velocity, I, I, I should I should know because of the cycling wear, right? But this is more like this is a jersey, a soccer jersey from Germany that I built for my team, and and all the numbers are the Fibonacci sequence. It's only like one, two, three. <laughs> so, anyways. I, I gotta go too. We have a meeting, so thank you so much for your participation. And I, I can't wait for August 13. We won't say that much here online. And um, next week, think about it if you are free. 
at 12 noon Eastern. And if you'd like to jump into a conversation on a topic of your choice, I'll be uh, giving you my open mic and my open space. Well, I, I, I'll try to track John down too, because I, I would imagine he would, he would really enjoy being in Yeah, yes, yes. And uh, I know that uh, on YouTube, I should keep a record of, of that chat. So I'll, of course, get back there and probably open my M, uh, ask me anything uh, letter where it's more interactive. I try to be. So anyways, thank you so much, my dear Squirrel. I'm going to go talk with Squirrel later. Uh, As we say in Mayan, in La Quiche. In La Quiche. In La Quiche, and you answer à la kin. À la kin. Yeah, because in La Quiche is kind of, in English, I could translate like, I'm another you. And the person in front of me responds, I am you. And you are me. That's the Mayan teaching. The Yucateca Mayan. That's good. Yeah. Blessing to you, my friend. Right, right, right. That's it. Cheers. Thank you. Thank Have a happy weekend. Talk to you soon. You too. Bye bye. Hey, beautiful people and lovers of agility. You like the segment you just saw of the Friday Live Agile show that we are here every Friday, 12 noon Eastern time on this YouTube or Rumble channel. So if you're not, subscribe, hit the bell to have notification of our amazing show. Sometimes it's also the Dare Real Agile podcast where we discuss with or without a guest or maybe sometime a group of people on anything business agility, scrum all the way for real and every subject that nobody else want to talk about because I don't know why. Let me know in the comment below. So to support the channel, like it, share this video to inspire anyone and let's join in togetherness in a community of innovator that want like to go beyond this agile and make it to the next level. See you soon on YouTube and Rumble. Cheers, guys.